Metro that you're a pretty special event happening in Gimli this week. Residents of that Manitoba town will be marking the 40th anniversary of the Gimli Glider incident and of course made headlines around the world. It was on July 23, 1983 when an Air Canada Boeing 767, which had run out of fuel, turned into a glider, landed safely on a local racetrack. So let's bring in Global's clan. He's getting a bit of a history lesson this morning, and he has gone beyond the perimeter. He's live from Gimli. Good morning, Clay. How's it going down there? Oh, Gimli is, is a great little town. It's very beautiful here. Yeah, Gabby, we're live from Gimli, and I have Peter Grant and Gwen Harp, who are with uh, the Gimli Glider exhibit. And if, if Peter looks a little familiar, every time I, I run into you, we're talking about airplanes. So very quickly, take us back, 1983, there's an Air Canada flight. Uh, it's sitting on the, uh, the tarmac in Montreal. There's about 70 people, and eventually the hope is it'll get to Edmonton, but things go south. Tell us about what happened. Well, the plane was a Boeing 767, brand new plane, and it was the first all-computerized plane, and it was the first metric plane that Air Canada had, and that's where the problems arose, because the uh, ground crew, when they are fueling a plane, were not quite up to par on converting liters into kilograms. They knew how to convert gallons into pounds. Pilot likes to know how much gas he's got, but also how much does it weigh. But the computer did it on this one, and so they didn't have to train the people that much, because the computer looked after converting liters into kilograms. Well, what happened was that was the day that that computer boom, stopped working. So the captain ordered a manual fuel up. Mistakenly, they used the same formula that they would use for Imperial, and they ended up telling the captain he had 20,000 kilograms of fuel, but because they used the wrong multiplier, he actually had 20,000 pounds, which is 9,000 kilograms. He needed 18,000 to get to Edmonton, so over Red Lake, Ontario, he ran out of fuel and he had to turn it into the world's largest glider, aiming for Winnipeg, and they realized just short of Winnipeg that they didn't have enough altitude. They weren't going to make it. They ain't going to make it, no. They got no engine. Yeah, but the, they got no gas. Oh, but the co-pilot came to the rescue, the uh, first officer. He trained in the Air Force. His jet training was at a little town called Gimli, and they had a 7,000-foot runway. And they said, Bob, we only got enough altitude to go 14 miles. Winnipeg's 19 miles away, but Gimli is 12 miles away. Where do you want to go? He said, get me to Gimli. And it's how he had to fly the plane and what he did to get here. That is the whole crux of the incident. I'm going to stop right now because she's got more. In this is our minister of finance here. <laughs> you know, you know, I'm just thinking it must have been terrifying for the people on that plane knowing they got no engines and they don't even know where they're going. That's correct. And he actually glided for 17 minutes. That's about 16 minutes too long for me. Mm -hmm. I, I, I can't imagine sitting in an aircraft with no noise gliding to you don't know where. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we're going to talk about this all morning, but if people come in here, they've never been here. Where are you located? At the corner of First and Center Street. We're part of the Lakeview Hotel. And we're uh, our entrance is on First Avenue. Um, and when they do, yeah, and when they do come in, what are they going to see? We have eight artifacts, the largest of which is right behind us, which is the top eight feet of the uh, tail fin. That's the actual tail. That's the top eight feet. If you were standing on the tarmac, that's 50 feet above your head. Wow. So I tell people, touch it, because you're not going to get another opportunity. Right. <laughs> and um, and there's, al there's also a simulator that we're going to look at a little later. Yes, and I understand you're going to fly it. Yeah, well, I don't know. I don't know if you want me to do that. Yeah, I don't know. Ladies and gentlemen, we may be running into a little turbulence coming up here. Just to make sure the seatbelts are fat. You're just collecting barf bags right now before we do. I'm sure you are. If you're going to let me pilot a plane, uh, but it's fascinating. Well, we we've set it up so that it's 10 miles out, slightly disabled. Very similar to what Bob would have experienced. That's kind of our education tool for people to have that experience as you're gliding only 10 miles into Gimli, not from the Ontario border. Yeah. Well, it, it's, a, it's an absolute miracle what happened here, but uh, let's, uh, let's go to break. We're going to come back a little later.